It's the first episode. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the backstory of Steady Shotbot, what's inside the enclosure, and we'll be 3D printing a smaller, stronger, faster little brother. All right, let's talk about backstory. The Steady Shotbot. Steady Shotbot was a three-axis computerized gimbal that allow you to shoot time-lapse photography in four axis, actually. Um, so it has a three-axis stabilized gimbal. You can see this, you put your camera in this location. At the same time, the base unit was programmable. So when it's not being used as a steady cam, you place your camera in here and you program the movement. There's no shortage of DIY sliders. But what you won't find is a three-axis stabilized um, steady cam that can also do motion control in one package. And if you do, you're probably going to spend several thousand for it. Um, if you just wanted a two-axis slider, you can probably find one for a couple hundred bucks. So that, that was the intent behind this. Um, but the second time around, I wanted to improve upon this design, uh, make it smaller and more compact, because I found I don't really want to take it out in the field and use it because it's heavy, you know, and these are the, the things that make it cumbersome to use in the field. This was designed all in 3D printing. This is a HIPS filament, which is high impact polystyrene. They're fairly rigid, but they are still plastic. And so if you bounce it a little bit, there's a little flex. It's difficult for the, the computer to stabilize it when it has that uh, mechanical resonance. That said, um, this was pretty comprehensive device that did everything I needed it to do and it worked fairly well for the first prototype. Um, but if you, if you were to crack this base open you would see that there are a lot of components in there. The lithium polymer battery, an Arduino Omega, I created a custom shield that goes on top of it, Bluetooth, a silent step stick, and camera trigger, touch screen on the front, 4D systems, 3 axis stabilization board, and then there's also a stepper motor with a 5 to 1 gear ratio. And so that's it, that's the backstory on this guy. Um, so you can see there's a lot of components in there. There's a lot of um, complexities to making it all work and making it all functional. You can only see a couple wires on this and there's wires going all the way up through this arm into the motors and sensors down here. Part of the design, I didn't want it to look like it was a hack job. I wanted it to look like a viable product. So moving forward, redesigning this and uh, making these uh, minimalistic in terms of space they're occupying and being able to leverage stronger materials for the rigidity of the gimbal. So with the new Nomad 883 CNC, I can cut aluminum. Some of the design that you'll see uh, in future videos is will consist of uh, aluminum with 3D printed cores. Uh, so that's where we're at. That's what I'm working on uh, these days. I've created some of the gimbal arms. I've also worked on some of the base. Uh, it's been a lot of fun going through this process and we'll see if we can't wrap this up see if we have a better product as an end result. Tech tip. In today's episode, we talk about 3D printing some parts for the Steady Shotbot. Um, but let's give you a crash course on the 3D printer that I'll be using. There's lots of different technologies when it comes to 3D printers. Um, this is what's referred to as an FDM printer. Um, FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. That means basically it starts with nothing and then it fuses plastic as it deposits layer by layer on the object. So in this what you see is a Cartesian design works on an X and Y axis and then it moves the carriage uh, vertically for the Z axis. Uh, each of the layers uh, range from 50 to 100 thousandth of an inch. Uh, the nozzles at the end here that actually melt the plastic, this particular nozzle is 50 thousandth of an inch. Uh, and you can think of these as uh, kind of like a hot melt glue gun. You know, this is what's referred to literally as the hot end. Uh, this hot end can be up to 230 degrees Celsius and it just depends on the material that you're actually melting. Um, many of these FDM printers have two different types of filament feed mechanisms. Uh, one's referred to as the weighed extruder and the weighed extruder is this wheel right here which actually pulls the material down into the hot end. And the other is the Bowden extruder and that's where you would eliminate this weight from the hot end, put it over by the actual spools and it actually pushes the material up to the hot end. This particular gantry has two extruders. One of them I use for Ninja Flex which is a very flexible filament um, and so if you were to use a weighted extruder with that where you're trying to push it through the tube then it's likely that it would compress and decompress and you'd get a uh, inconsistent feed rate to the hot end. Uh, the second nozzle is using is uh, printing with a HIPS filament. HIPS filament is high impact polystyrene which is very rigid um, 
And so you could use that with a Bowden type extruder, but in this case, this gantry has two hot ends, both of which have the uh, weighted extruders. And so when it's printing, it'll actually move this left and right, and this particular bed goes in and out. So you have the Y axis, the X axis moves the carriage left and right, and the Z axis moves it vertically. Um, so we'll be printing a lot of the parts. The layer thickness is what's really contingent on how quick you can actually generate the part. So uh, obviously the thinner the layer, you're gonna get finer resolution in the amount of detail that you can put into that object, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, so this is a very useful tool. I, I use it a lot. You can um, use it for just about anything. I hope this helps uh, understand the technology. Um, if you're interested, it's a great technology to get into if you need to rapid prototype that you couldn't otherwise make. All right, so this is the Steady Shot base, the new version, which is smaller, lighter, a lot more compact. Um, a lot of the work's already been done. Next time around, we'll go through the details of using Fusion 360, uh, but this time I'm just gonna show you the model, and then we'll send it over to the printer. So what you're looking at here is the base. You can see that the top and bottom are transparent. There's the main center core, and you can see some of the circuitry for the interface display. And you'll see that there are several pilot holes within the enclosure. And these pilot holes allow me to put the th brass threaded inserts in there. On the back side, there's a connection panel. The connection panel as well has four holes for screwing it into the enclosure. And then it's exposed on the back side. This was milled in aluminum. And as you can see, there's no connections right now. So that's all there is to it. There's a bunch of uh, pilot holes for threaded inserts where we'll mount the circuit boards, the display unit, uh, the connection panel and so on. For now, let's export it from Fusion 360 and get over into Simplify 3D. So now that we have the part over in Simplify 3D, we can no longer make changes to the model, but we don't really need to. We did all of that in Fusion 360. Um, but what we can do now is slice and prepare the model for 3D printing. Some of the things you have to do to prepare the model is to create supports. And supports are basically a scaffolding that hold up areas of the part that are extended over open space. Um, so if you see on screen, we've got uh, some support material in the dark orange that is supporting uh, flanges in the open areas for the display and the connection panel. Um, we can rotate around that and we can position it on our 3D printing bed. And then when we're prepared to print, we can just hit the print button. Um, this is going to allow us to select the parameters we want to use for slicing. Slicing is where we convert that model into layers. And depending on the configuration, it could be thin layers, thick layers, um, however we want to produce it. If we need something really quick, we'll do a thick layer um, and increase the speeds, but your quality goes down because you are extruding plastic. So selecting the configuration, Simplify 3D generates the toolpath to extrude the plastic and create the object. And so this allows me to actually step through and see what each layer looks like. And you can see as it's building up upon itself, um, a lot of the yellow scaffolding is being created in, to support overhangs and things of that nature on the model. So it looks pretty good and it looks like we're good to go. We're gonna warm up the printer and then send the model over to have it 3D printed. So we have a, a really nice finish on the, the base module. We've cleaned up all the rough edges, removed all the support material, and now what we have are pilot holes inside here. And the pilot holes aren't good for threading, um, obviously, um, because it's soft plastic, and so if you thread things in there, they tend to strip out. So what I like to use are um, brass threaded inserts. And these are heat set. You see that, it's like a threaded brass insert. And so what you do is you heat these up uh, generally with like a uh, soldering iron and that will allow you to press them into your pilot holes. After I do that, then we'll get the display, we'll throw the ribbon cable on there, we'll uh, bolt that into place and so that that's all prepared.
right, so we've made a lot of progress, and I think we're going to end the episode here. We've completed the base. We've uh, cleaned up all the support material from this. We were able to 3D print this. We did our um, brass threaded inserts in here, the heat set threaded inserts. Um, we assembled and installed the display module. Um, so we're making good progress. Some of the next things we can do is model and carve out this connection port as well as finalize the circuit design for the main processor. Uh, the circuit design will be etched on the Nomad as well. So next episode we may be diving into some of those things. It may be interesting to show you how to etch the circuit board on the Nomad and then how we do the final assembly on the circuit board. So um, we've got a few things going. In the meantime, we, I haven't been working on the gimbal. I've got a lot of the parts done for it, um, but at the same time I need some of the main components. So I ordered new parts for this guy. Um, this guy, um, they should be coming in a couple days and once we have those and we can hop back on the gimbal side. Once the gimbal's complete then we'll marry the two and we'll be pretty close to having something that we can test and start writing software for. Um, so that's where all the fun part comes in. So um, getting this under our belt is a major milestone. We're almost there and we're making good progress. Um, again, Thanks for taking your time to watch the video and if you have any interest or you want to see more details about something and less of another then just let me know in the comments below and I appreciate your time and have a great day.